John Paul and Craig in Hollyoaks. <gasps> Camp! I, I... Well, hello, he, she's, and they's. This glorious specimen's taste. And this absolute goddess is Munro Bigdor. And in this episode, we're joined by a self proclaimed glamorous geek. This Tia Coffee. Hi. Hello, 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 baby. Hi. It's been a long time. It's been a little minute, hasn't it? I love this jewel print. Mm -hmm. Oh, do you know what? I thought I'd make an effort for you. Also, I hear some congratulations are in order, baby, because your brand new EP just came out. I'm having a great time. We just had to celebrate with your very favorite cocktail. Mm -hmm. Oh. Gorgeous. Thank you very much. Magic. Chin chin. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous. <laughs> so, it's time to dig into your personal queer epiphany. Mm -hmm. So, my queer epiphany is John Paul and Craig Dean in Hollyoaks. I watched that sort of like with bated breath, mm -hmm. like obsessing about the storyline. So, John Paul was gay. And his best friend Craig did not appear to be gay at the time. And they had a lovely little friendship. And then they started having little kisses and a snob and everything. Oh. It's like a burgeoning romance. And it was like kind of gorgeous at the time, slightly arousing, but also mm. mostly uh, quite gorgeous to sort of see myself reflected mm. on the screen and sort of be like, oh. that's me. So I'm you me. had a similar saucy little encounter somewhere at some point. Well, Taste, I text you about that privately, but you're ah! gonna bring it up. Oh, Tears! We're talking oh, about it. Spilling it all on this show, baby. I kind of was experiencing a similar thing mm -hmm. while I was at school. Oh, tell us all about it. Mm -hmm. I, I won't use names, Johnny, but... Um, <laughs> oh, Johnny! <laughs> well, I had uh, a heterosexual best friend, and we sort of, like, were having a, a similar energy. And our friends uh, spent a lot of time referring to us as John, Paul and Craig. We had the occasional little smooch, among oh, other things. Little nice. packy poo. Mm. Yeah, but, High school you know, he's married now. I wish, <laughs> wish him all the best. So, this Jean-Paul and Craig, mm -hmm. their relationship. Yeah. What did that mean to you at the time? Well, I think it was quite important for me because I was sort of exploring myself and learning about my own feelings mm. at that time and being able to watch people who were uh, playing the same sort of age that I was and experiencing the same thing was super, super important. Yeah. So I think people really underestimate how significant it is mm. for people to see themselves reflected on stage, on screen, here right now. Do you know what I mean? Um, and it kind of is a bit of a game changer when you're like, okay, well, what I'm feeling right now is it's valid. normal and yeah. it's valid, exactly. The tea that we see in front of us today, do you think any of this is a product of John Paul and Craig's romance from back in the day. Oh yeah, absolutely. And it kind of gave me that ability to be much more open about myself. Because as we've said, you feel validated by yeah. seeing your own feelings reflected. So it made me and my group of friends a lot more open, a lot more honest about conversations. The slow realization that the majority of my social group at school were in fact gay mm -hmm. um, was sort of like something that I genuinely think came out of us all watching that program mm -hmm. and us all just standing John Paul and Craig. I hope they're still together wherever they are. Oh. Where are you now? Now, now. Well, we've got Holly Oates to thank for one of the biggest drag queen pop stars in the UK oh, then. Yeah, there go, baby. <laughs> Direct thought. correlation. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Was there any other storylines or any other people or representation that helped you feel seen in this way? Or was this the first time? For me, especially being sort of uh, mixed race and queer, it was difficult to really see myself reflected on screen. And aside from Hollyoaks, I had an absolute obsession with Big Brother. To be oh. with you. I had like a real experience in the first series, particularly because when I was, the first series came out when I was like nine or 10 and I wasn't allowed to watch it, but I did. Um, and I'd never seen sort of someone who looked like me. So there was uh, someone called Mel on it, who was also sort of from mixed heritage. And I was like, this person looks like me and my sister. Oh my God, great, love it. There was like Anna the lesbian nun. Anna the lesbian nun. Is that her full name? I'm just thinking about that man that was like, would you like me to be the cat? George That's Galloway. George Galloway. <laughs> Problematic. Did you feel represented <laughs> by George Galloway? Personally, 100% yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, well. Oh. We went a little off book. Yeah. <laughs> Coming into the present, do you think we've come quite a long way since then? I mean, I mean, nowadays you see gay relationships everywhere in tally. Yeah, I definitely think there is a lot more diversity on screen mm. and people have more of an opportunity to see themselves reflected mm. and see themselves represented. We've definitely come a long way, yeah. but I think we can do 
a little bit better we sometimes. Can do a lot. Right? Oh, yeah. No shade to anyone. <laughs> no, but, no, I mean, who were some of your heroes when you were growing up, Tess? Ooh, Prince. Because he was just so out there of like his like. You kind of never knew like what he was into, what he was liking, what he was feeling. But he was always just so out there with like his fashions, his music, his behavior. And you're so reserved now. I know. I'm such a timid little pussy. <laughs> Shrinking violet. <laughs> Wallflower. <laughs> some may say. <laughs> Who are some of yours, Miss Munro? I'm keen to know. Hmm. I was really into RuPaul when I was in high school, and I'd listen to Supermodel and Looking Good, oh, yeah. Feeling Gorgeous on mm -hmm. the bus, mm -hmm. and no one would know what I was listening to, but it was Campus Christmas in my earbuds. And <laughs> I feel really, really inspired by what you two have done as well, because black so drag queens in the UK, I mean, it's not really something that we've seen in the mainstream. No. And I looked to RuPaul, I mean, before I transitioned, I did drag mm -hmm. and, you know, we've known each other uh -huh, for a long uh -huh, time. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But I remember being Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, I really looked to RuPaul, but it's so inspiring to me to think that you two are what RuPaul was to me back in the day, to the youth of tomorrow and the adults of tomorrow, the new generation. So yes. thank you for representing. Oh, baby. Oh, that, oh, was like, that was a sweet, so sweet one. Oh, yeah. Girl, we're getting, getting a married. mush young queer epiphany. Yeah, we're oh. getting married later. <laughs> The thing that I love about representation is a lot of the time it really shows us what's possible. Mm -hmm. When we don't see ourselves reflected in the world around us, we need those things in the media to open up our minds and show us, you know, what we can do. So did Jean-Paul and Craig's romance open up your mind to anything that's happening in your life? Oh yeah, no, it really did. I mean, for me watching them and their burgeoning romance sort of uh, taught me that there is sort of uh, a, a difference between sort of like sexual feeling and romantic feeling and it helped me to start to understand sort of that my my romantic feelings were valid and they weren't just sort of like down to the physical do you know mm. what i mean there was a lot more sort of going on there what i'm saying is i was in love with my straight best friend so i hope I hope he's watching. I want to know, what do you hope for from the future of gay male representation on telly? I think it's getting to a place where things are getting better, but I think just the entire gamut of queer representation mm -hmm. needs a little bit more pushing. Always. Absolutely. Always. I think it's that process of sort of normalising queer relationships to people who don't see that. So I think it's important for people who are making shows uh, behind the camera, writing, all of that kind of thing, to like really put in content that is going to empower people and give them knowledge about things. It's about sort of normalising things and also teaching and educating people in the right way. We want gay people writing the storylines so they're realistic. Yeah. Gay rights! <laughs> gay, gay, gay rights! <laughs> I'm available for writing, <laughs> thanks. I'm not, I'm quite busy actually. It's so important for people the kids who like might live in a small rural village or something and not have sort of grown-ups who who represent them or anyone to sort of talk to about that, mm -hmm. to see themselves reflected mm -hmm. and know that they're valid and know that we care about them and that we're a big community ready mm -hmm. to embrace them with open arms. Things mm -hmm. are getting better. I mean, yeah. if you look at soaps now, I mean, when I was a kid, um, two men kissed on EastEnders and it was front page news and it was like, de yeah. class is deplorable well, yeah. and terrible mm -hmm. and brainwashing the kids. And like now, gay characters are just, you know, part of the furniture. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I think that that is good. But as you said, we need, yeah, we need more diversity. We need, you know, more like different varieties of love. We need black love. We need, yes. you know, Asian love. We need mm -hmm. alien love. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Someone needs to record this. <laughs> oh my God. Now we know all about your queer epiphany, we need to know how you're going to celebrate it. Where would it be? Who would be on the guest list? And what music would be playing? Go. So it would be a hotel room with a double bed, a bottle of champagne, and it would only be Craig Dean who was invited. <laughs> no, we've got to celebrate their love, haven't mm. we? Maybe we should be planning a wedding for them. Well, you're already dressed for the occasion. And have a gorgeous time, champagne flowing, maybe a little chocolate fountain. Mm. What about the tunes, mama? 
tea or coffee part one the damage. I think we've got to have like a lot of sort of like LGBTQ artists on the playlist. Mm -hmm. So crack out a bit of like Tom Aspel, why not? Love yes. a bit of Tom. Mm -hmm. uh, a bit of my mate Billy Cullum. A bit of Rina Soyayama. Oh, Very yes. Mm -hmm. Are you going to be DJing? I was just going to sing live. <laughs> you're going to sing live? Yeah. Okay, you're on the decks. I'll just, okay. I'll do the, I'll do the door. I'll do security. Tia. It's been our pleasure to have you here today and thank you for telling us all about your queer epiphany. Thank you for having me. And I mean, also, reunited, baby, never felt so good. Honestly, I think this is the first time I've seen you since that show that we did. <laughs> Which one was that? I was like, recall. Oh my God, I think we know. <laughs> the one that I lost, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I did too, but hey-ho. Anyway, I love you, baby. Love you too. And as for you lot watching, we'll see you soon. To find out more about Tia's beloved John Paul and Craig and Hollyoaks, just do a bit of Googling, kids. It's not that hard. And if you or a loved one is looking for support, Mind Out is a brilliant LGBTQ mental health charity. And Black Girl Dangerous, AKA BGD, is also an excellent resource for queer people of color. More resources are also available in the charity helpline section of the MTV website on screen right now. Oh, and do me a favour, hit like and subscribe, would you? That way you'll never miss an episode of Queer Epiphany or anything else from MTV UK's glorious YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs>